What's going on, Cyclone fans? Welcome back to the Chatting Cage as we get ready for the start of the 2024 season on Coney Island. I'm the voice of your Brooklyn Cyclones, Justin Rock, joined alongside one of the stars of the Cyclones from 2023. That is infielder DeAndre Smith. DeAndre, how's everything going in Port St. Lucie, my friend? Really good, really good. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for taking the time to hop on. I know it's an off day for you guys down in Port St. Lucie on this Monday, but what's the experience been like down in spring training so far this year? It's been great. Um, a little different from my experience last year. Uh, didn't really have much of a spring last year because of injury, but body feels really good. And this camp's kind of flying by and I'm excited to uh, get out to New York for the season. How exciting is it to be healthy and ready to go during spring training? I know it's really frustrating, especially in your first full spring training last year to have injuries sort of get in the way. Um, no, it's very exciting. I mean, body is in a great spot. I feel uh, pretty much at 100% every day I'm stepping out on the field and legs feel good. And um, my back was a, a big problem for me last year, but that feels really good this year. So it's a lot of new things. Being out there every day is has been nice. And, um, you know, getting all the at-bats and getting all the reps this year, heading into the season, it's been, been great. How does getting all those reps and all that experience during spring training help you not only in terms of continuing to improve on your craft, but just in confidence, knowing that you're ready to to go straight into it on opening day on April 5th throughout the minors? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's nice. Um, I, th I think it's still just a learning process that you go through. And the more spring trainings you get under your belt, you know, like you're probably not going to be at your best in January or February, but, you know, you just keep kind of break by break, day by day, keep building off of yesterday and uh take that into the season and you know opening day you'll probably be a different player in April than you are in June July and but it just comes with the season and and uh you know just growing every day now during the off season you also had an opportunity to get away from baseball for a little bit I'm sure getting a chance to spend some time with friends and family in California what are some of the things you really enjoy during the off season so I uh, I spent the off season in uh, Arizona with with Jacob Reimer. We were roommates out there, um, and that was pretty exciting. Um, after the fall league, uh, I loved Arizona so much that I just decided to stay there, and um, no, that that was pretty cool. What was it like getting a chance to spend some extended time with your former Cyclones teammate Jacob Reimer? What were some of the favorite parts about getting to to live together and continue to work on the craft together? Um, I mean, we were roommates in Brooklyn, um, so jumping into air, into the off season in Arizona as roommates, we kind of know each other very well. So, like, I mean, a lot of things we did together were some of the same things we did in Brooklyn: play video games together, just watch movies. We're both pretty big movie guys, so we'll throw on movies at night, uh, just kind of hang out. What are some of the the favorite movies you watch, and is there a, a favorite movie between you two guys uh, that you guys watch during the off season? Yeah, um, Interstellar. We watched Interstellar. That's that was one of our favorite movies. I re I remember, uh, but we got back from an away trip, and um, we got back pretty late that night, and I think it was like two or three in the morning, and he just texts me. He's like, "Hey, are you awake?" We both just couldn't fall asleep, and we ended up throwing that movie on. Woke up the next morning and off day and just talk about the movie is pretty cool one of the other things that was great about the off season for you which made the off season a little bit shorter was getting a chance to participate in the prestigious arizona fall league this past year after the regular season in minor league baseball came to a close what was it like getting a chance to participate in that league and how did that help you improve your craft uh, it was awesome it was awesome a lot of great people um on that team on that glendale desert dog team uh a lot of familiar people also um i think just for me it kind of built some confidence in me and you know you see a lot of like the top prospects on you know social media and then you know just playing with them and saying like okay i can still compete and i'm still holding my own and um i think that as i kept playing there i was like just getting better week by week I was going to say that's one of the things that makes the Arizona Fall League so unique compared to the rest of minor league baseball is you're on a team with players from several other organizations and coaches from several organizations. What was it like getting a chance to coerce and work with some guys that maybe you knew from the past or didn't know at all going into it? How did the, those different you know experiences and those different mindsets sort of help you work on your game? 
Um, I, I think that that clubhouse gelled pretty fast. Like from the first day we all met, it was a really good group of guys. Um, so I think just the comfort level, like everyone was going up to everyone and asking questions about this or about that. Like, I, I don't think that there were really any egos or anything like that in that clubhouse. Like It was a really good group of guys where uh, just like the comfort level was really, really good to, uh, I guess, you know, in the short amount of time, build that sort of team feeling that you might not get in, in an event like that, where it's only what six weeks or something like that, um, where, you know, that kind of, stuff takes time to build, but we kind of had that right away. What was it like? What are some of the things that you feel like you worked on during the course of the fall league and going into the off season that you feel like you really improved upon during that time out there with that experience playing against so many high level players? I think just slowing down. Um, that was something for me that I really wanted to work on. Like, I feel like my internal clock is just really fast. And that was something that I needed to do was slow down and, control my breath and and just really slow the game down um and I think like just baseball and throughout the season like you fail so much and I think the fall league was huge for me because the talent was some of the best talent I've ever played against but the pressure was probably the least amount of pressure I've ever had while playing so and being a new coaching staff for the Brooklyn Cyclones here in 2024. Did you ever get a chance to work with Gilbert Gomez or Eduardo Nunez and some of the guys that will be a part of the Cyclones coaching staff this year? And if so, uh, what is your experience like working with them? What can fans on Coney Island expect from them this year? Yeah, so my first year after the draft, I uh, was in St. Lucie with uh, with Gomi. Um, and that's a year that we – we won the Florida State League. Um, so I, I had been around him a short amount of time, but obviously throughout camp and stuff, like um, see these coaches every single day and, you know, work with them. And I think it's a great staff that they uh, have in Brooklyn. And I know Gomi is, you know, a great manager and um, really I, I know a lot of guys can get behind him and uh, really want to play for him. And, you know, he's very, very, very smart with when it comes to baseball and, uh, you can tell he's excited and <clears throat> ready to, you know, get out to Brooklyn for the season. Not too many people get a chance to play professional baseball with a college teammate like you have with Rylan Thomas and both of you guys got a chance to play together in St. Lucie after you got drafted in Coney Island last year with the Cyclones. How cool has it been able to share the experiences between being in LA at, on USC's campus and now being here on the East Coast with uh, the New York Mets organization? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I didn't think it was going to happen or I didn't really think it was a possibility, but, you know, it, it's happened and it's been really cool from day one. We were there for each other. Like it was, it was special. I think that, you know, being drafted by the Mets was pretty cool because I didn't go into, and I, I didn't go into an, an org where uh, I didn't know anyone. Like I knew Kevin very well from you know both growing up in SoCal and we played on the area code team together knew Rylan um I knew Jacob uh I went to the combine with with Chase and you know there were a lot of guys in who were in that draft class where at some point or another we'd come across each other one of the things you mentioned that you enjoyed about last season was getting a chance to get involved with the youth baseball camps at the ballpark and give back to the next generation of ball players how important is that to you to give back to the young ball players. Yeah, I think it's everything. I mean, that's the way you keep the game alive and you keep the game growing. You you want kids to want to play baseball and to keep playing baseball. You know, to take an hour or so out of your day to make a kid's day isn't isn't too bad or to keep the game alive and keep the game fun and growing for children. Um I think just having that mentality throughout the season kind of makes everything, you know, easier when you don't know, uh, like everyone says this, but you don't know if that's that kid's first time and last time ever seeing you play. And uh, you do want to, you know, show him, you know, everything that you can, if you can give him a ball or sign a ball or sign something for him, like you just, you know, be appreciative that you're in the spot that you're in and can give back.
One of the other interesting parts uh, of last year for you was also living on the East Coast, living in Brooklyn, living in New York City and Coney Island. How cool was that for you getting a chance to live on the opposite end of the country for a change for really you know a large part of the year? And what are some of your favorite parts about just being a, a resident of New York City and Brooklyn? Um, you know, at first it was really fast for me and it seemed just like the movies. Like it was the first time in New York. Um, yeah, I mean, every, everything that I thought New York was, it turned out to be like the, the subways and, um, just, you know, a lot, just a lot going on at once, but, you know, I really enjoyed it. I really loved getting into the city during the off days. Um, I, I loved Brooklyn and, and Coney Island. Uh, you know, we, we would tend to walk around there a lot after games and uh, just walk around that community and, and get outside. I thought that was pretty cool. What was it like also getting a chance to play on Coney Island, Maimonides Park, playing next to the boardwalk, Nathan's, the beaches? Yeah, it's electric. It's electric. That that atmosphere is amazing. Um, you know, every with everything going on, it's really, really like you you have to lock in. It's it could be tough to some guys to play there because, you know, there is a lot going on. But I think that's what makes that place so special. Um, that there is so much going on and that, you know, you look in right field and, you know, you, you see the water or you see a bunch of different things going on. And then, you know, left field, they've got the little concerts going on behind behind the wall and um, center field. You know, you see you you see the uh, amusement ride, the amusement park rides and stuff going on. And um, no, there's a lot going on, but that's what makes that place so, so fun and so cool. And, uh, you know, the fans are, are amazing, too. There's there's some really uh, hardcore cyclone fans that you know I don't think miss a game. What are some of the the things, some of the benchmarks you want to accomplish this season? What have been the motivations going into what is your second full season in the Mets organization? I think a huge thing for me was just to have fun and you know enjoy uh, every moment and the experience of you know being a professional baseball player. I think. Pretty, I'm very blessed to be in the situation, and um, I don't know. I don't really want to have goals or, um, I guess, like play to reach something. I just, you know, want to go out there and play and uh, have fun and, and compete. Well, it was a lot of fun watching DeAndre Smith on Coney Island in 2023, and we're going to have a lot of fun watching what great things he does in this 2024 campaign. DeAndre Smith, member of the 23 Cyclones, thank you so much for stopping by the chatting cage. Best of luck the rest of spring training in Port St. Lucie, and we'll stay in touch throughout the course of the season, my friend. Best of luck. Thank you. I'm Justin Rock saying is so long here from Coney Island. We look forward to seeing you out on opening day, April 9th, here at Maimonides Park.